What's up guys? Today we are looking at a rather fresh release from Stone Brewing Company. And if you've watched any of my reviews, I'm kind of all over the place with Stone Brewing. I did not really love Enjoy It by IPA. I thought Espresso IRS was out of this world. And I don't believe I've put any other Stone reviews up. But I thought I'd bring something special. This is the Stone Ruin 10 IPA. Uh, this is like the bee's knees right now. All the cool kids are drinking this. It's about a week old. Uh, last year, Mitch Steele and uh, Stone Brewing Company decided to take Ruination to the next level for their 10th anniversary. I can't believe this has been around 10 years. Um, I remember the first time I ever took a sip of Ruination, and I thought my palate was going to just dissipate, and I'd never be able to drink beer again because it was so bitter. Uh, might be exaggerating a little bit, but uh, those suffering from a lupulin threshold shift, this really should uh, combat all that. Uh, this one clocks in at 10.8% alcohol by volume. It is the second time they've brewed um, the 10th anniversary ruination. And God, man, I love Stone's artwork. I have to say it. Like, I love the novel on the back. I love the the drink by date. It's just awesome. And stage dive into a mosh pit of hops. Well, Greg and uh, Mitch, do you guys listen to metal? Can you imagine if you were stage diving into a circle pit? I just don't know how that'd work. Anyways, that's a little tangent here. I'm going to get this one into a glass because I'm really excited to try it rather fresh. It's been around... God, why, why do they even make these? They're absolutely worthless. I can't find my awesome bottle opener. So we're going to have to use a good old can opener. But I'm excited. Yeah, you know, Stone IPAs have, I guess, been letting me down for a while. So I'm going to get this one into a glass and I'll let you know what I think. I had a regular ruination not too long ago, probably about three months ago. I couldn't find it. I wanted to do a side-by-side, -side, kind of like DJ's Brewtube did, but I couldn't find ruination anywhere. Uh, anyways, this one pours really like uh, golden, hazy, amber. Um, finger and a half of lacing, really tight white, um, off-white khaki bubbles. Really a beautiful looking IPA. A little dark for my likes, but the camera's not doing it justice. It's it's very, very um, amber here, not really red. But yeah, I can just smell the citra and the centennial just blasting away. I know they, they wanted to merge the old with the new when they made this one, so I'm gonna get my nose into it. Holy shit. Tangerine, pine, astringent hops, dank, really a dank character. When when they, if you watch the video from Stone when they do their little um, showcasing their beers and they they show a video of the beer, uh, Greg talks a lot about it being dank from the Citra. Man, is it dank. Really, really kind of earthy though. Like I probably should have drank it a week ago. Yeah. Tropical fruits, uh, mango, tangerine is a really, really uh, strong nose. That like strong citrus of orange, definitely tangerine, almost clementine. -y. Yeah, overall, really, really nice smelling IPA. It smells really balanced. No booziness coming through. I'm gonna taste this bad boy. I'm salivating. Clocks in well over a hundred IBUs, and you can tell. Man, there's just waves and waves of pungent, astringent bitterness coming right at the front of my tongue, and it's a, it's almost like tongue bucklingly bitter. Um, there's there's this oniony character that I get from a lot of Stone IPAs that I'm not sure why I get it, but I got it in uh, Enjoy by as well, and I'm not entirely fond of it. Man, though, there's once you get past that oniony astringent bitterness, there's just wafts of tropical fruit and tangerine like flavors, mango, papaya, hints of peach. It's just really, really all over the place, and it's really good. Except there's that really firm oniony character, like almost like funyun.
I found it interesting. My bottle shop classified this as a double Imperial IPA. So we've now taken it to the next level. Now Imperial isn't good enough. You have to double that. That's a good, it's a good way to put it. This is insane. Um, on the back of it, they talk about using uh, five pounds of hop packed into each barrel. I know, um, funny enough, uh, if you remember listening to the Sam Adams commercials, they talk about putting a pound of hops per barrel of Boston Lager, which is pretty impressive for a lager, but five pounds, I mean, as a home brewer, I use a pound and a half in like some of my biggest IPAs, and I don't even, it's messy. Yields suck, and uh, anyways, this one, according to them, is a liquid poem to the glory of hop. I'll give it that. It, it encompasses all aspects of hop bitterness, hop aroma, um, showcases everything it needs to. The one thing I will say about this batch versus um, last year's is I think it's a little bit more balanced. And in comparison to Enjoy By, there's no boost. Like almost 11%. It reminds me, you know, it's just kind of like sterling abrasive in a way. There's zero, zero alcohol character coming through. And it's, it's damn impressive. Um, if only I could get over the oniony style flavor in the beginning, that would really do it for me. But that's my palette. And I see that they're making this an annual release, which I'm pretty excited for. Uh, rating wise, for me, God, it's it's really good and it's really bitter and it's it speaks to everything I like about IPAs and craft beer and it's impressive stuff. I'm going to 95 out of 100. It it I think as it warms up, things will uh, leap out at me a little bit more. And man, I'm really happy I picked up a few of these. There's a few in the fridge for the rest of summer. Yeah, Stone Ruin 10 IPA. Pick it up now. Rubber Stone beer is sold. Awesome stuff. You really can't go wrong for less than 10 bucks a bomber. So, cheers, guys. Always remember to respect beer. I will for sure see you in another beer view. Cheers.